Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Just waiting for our participants to come in. Good evening to those of you who are just joining us. We'll just give it a few seconds for people to join us. Hi there, Janet. Thank you for saying hi. All right, we've still got more people joining us. Welcome to everyone who's just joining us. Thank you very much. Evening, Maggie. All right. Okay, I think we'll make a start. Well, good evening, everybody, and a very warm welcome to the online Nature Trek Roadshow. This is the third event that we've done this week, and we've been really moved by the overwhelming good wishes and words of encouragement that we've received from you all so far. Um, so many of you have been writing in the comments um, at the end of the evening how much you've enjoyed the night, or been emailing us afterwards the next day to, to thank us for uh, putting on these events and just giving so many lovely words of encouragement. Um, it's been really lovely to uh, to listen to and read so far in the following morning. Um, and truly, the, the pleasure is all ours. We're so <clears throat> pleased to be doing something positive for you all on these dark, cold winter nights, especially with this week's news of a renewed lockdown. To be able to bring you these presentations and hopefully brighten your evenings is what we want to do. And that's what this is really all about. And we're thrilled that so many of you have wanted to join each evening as well. Uh, we've got over 300 people signed up to join us tonight, many of whom uh, will be watching with members of their household. So once again, we could perhaps guesstimate we've got over four or 500 people actually joining us tonight. And those of you who tuned in earlier this week will have heard me explain that this is the first winter since the late 1980s that we haven't actually been out on the road um, traveling around different, uh, visiting different venues and delivering our popular online presentation evenings uh, where we'd be chatting to you all over a coffee, handing out brochures um, and seeing you all in person. Um, so this is somewhat different for us. Please do bear with us. Uh, but we're delighted that we're still able to actually do it and keep engaged with you all. Um, so I hope that you're sitting comfortably and that you're joining us with a, a cup of tea or a glass of wine and we can share a drink together and just enjoy the evening ahead. Our plan for each evening is to give you the best armchair travel that we possibly can by taking you to some of the world's most superb wildlife destinations. Tonight, focusing on Eastern Europe. Now, please bear with us and um, this is new for us too. We are used to speaking to a, a live audience in person. Um, so it's somewhat different for all of us, but we've really enjoyed it so far. And it's just really exciting to be taking on this new initiative and, and giving it a go. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Sarah Frost. I'm Nature Trek's marketing manager and a cruise leader. And I've worked for Nature Trek for six years and I'll be your host for this evening, speaking to you from Hampshire. If you're new to Nature Trek and the talks this evening inspire you to request a brochure, which I hope they do, um, then please just email us with your postal address at info at naturetrek.co.uk and we'll be very happy to pop one in the post to you. Indeed, as we speak, our 2021 and 2022 brochure is at the printers right this minute and will be published in a couple of weeks time. And we're really hopeful that we can get a good number of the tours in that brochure off the ground later this year and get you all traveling again. Now we want this session this evening to be interactive, so please do feel welcome to ask any questions that you may have by using the little Q&A section at the bottom of your screen, be it questions about um, the tour uh, specifically or the destination, or even just questions about how the travel industry is handling the pandemic as a whole. We're happy to chat to you about this, it's what we're here for, so please do ask any questions that you may have throughout the evening. We'll type replies as we can, as and when we can, but we'll do a main uh, question and chat session at the end after the last presentation has finished at 9.05. So without any further ado, um, we're going to kick off our Eastern Europe evening and I'll hand you over to Tom who will introduce himself and he'll take us first to Albania. Over to you Tom. Great, thank you very much Sarah. Just share my presentation with you all. Uh, 
Okay. Well, hello again, everybody. Um, my name's Tom Abbott. Um, I'm an operations manager uh, for NatureTrek. Um, I look after a whole range of tours um, all around the world, really. Lots in, in, uh, in the UK, um, in Europe, um, Asia, and South America. Um, and for the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to, to focus on two fantastic destinations, um, Albania and what is now known as North Macedonia. And I've been lucky enough to, to travel through these countries, um, wrecking them, sussing out all the best sites. And we, uh, we have one tour um, in each destination. So I'll start just with a little bit of geography. Um, where, where is Albania? I always think of Albania as opposite the, you know, the heel of Italy. Um, and then North Macedonia, um, just inland from that on the sort of Western Balkan Peninsula. Just a little more on the geography. So we have Tirana as the capital of Albania. Um, and to, uh, there, there are direct BA flights into Tirana. So that's how we, that's how we start our Albania, our Albania tour. Um, we, we sort of, we, we first off head down to Barat, fantastic city um, down here, and then sort of cover the coastal areas and then travel all the way to the north and the, and the wonderful rugged mountain ranges at the, uh, at the, at the you know, sort of the, yeah, the northern end of the country, um, even dipping into Kosovo. And then just next door is, uh, is Macedonia. It, it changed its name to North Macedonia in 2019, um, the, the, the capital of Skopje. Um, and then we travel, first of all, down to Bitola, um, and this the amazing uh, region around Okrid and Lake Prespa, um, two national parks here. And then we head over to um, Kavadasi um, and cover some more lowland areas before looping back um, to uh, uh, back to Skopje. So on with Albania, um, I'll, uh, I'll go to the Albania um, to my team first. Um, this is a, a photograph of Barat, um, fantastic uh, UNESCO city, um, some amazing architecture. Um, some, some wonderful habitats on the, on the doorstep. We'll, we'll explore, we'll head up to the castle on the, uh, um, up, on the, up on the hill here and, uh, and uh, just experience what, the, uh, what, what life is like in Albania in the city here and then strike out to the coast for our sort of wildlife excursions. And there's some fantastic reserves. The, uh, the Carabasta National Park holds 5% of the world's breeding Dalmatian pelicans. So we'll, we'll be sure to get, uh, to get some fantastic views of them. Um, a whole range of waders passed through. So we run the tour um, to Albania in April um, and, and in May. The April tour is, is probably better for your migrating um, uh, birds on the coast. So this is a, a familiar bird here, black winged stilt. But we have lots of other species passing through the, the wetlands here and then the saline lagoons, such as um, temminks and little stints, uh, big flocks of spotted red shank, often, uh, often numbering into the, into the hundreds, um, you know, ducks as well. Um, you know, Good numbers of gargany passing through. Um, great place to see um, uh, greater flamingos here. Um, some, some displaying here. They uh, they're very commonly seen. And pygmy cormorants, a species that we're, you know, we we don't see often in, in Western Europe, but is a is a very common sight on any water body really uh, in Albania. Um, so yeah, so from Barat we're we're heading out to the coast and uh, and enjoying um, some fantastic uh, fantastic reserves. Um, on, the, on the coastal areas of, sort of southern central Albania. It's not just a birding tour, it's a very much all round natural history holiday. Um, we're, we're, we're here to enjoy everything. This is a Herman's tortoise. Um, most, most groups uh, get to enjoy uh, this chat. Um, and the coastal area, the sort of sandy, um, scrubby area on the coast is often a, often a good place to find, uh, find this tortoise. So that's our first two nights. So, so, so the tour starts often with flight time as we spend the first night actually in Tirana. Then we spend two nights in, in the wonderful city of Barat. And then we have a bit of a journey on our hands, but it's a, it's a fascinating journey. Um, you're often greeted with situations like this, a, a goat herder um, wandering in the mountains. And we, we, we work our way north, making various stops, um, again, enjoying a couple, a couple of different cities and a little bit of culture thrown in there. Uh, and we even nip over, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we, we cross the border into, into Kosovo um, to have lunch. Um, so if, you, you know, if, you, if you're you know, ticking off countries, that's a good one. Um, and then we, uh, we finally, sort of in the late afternoon, early evening, make it to our, our sort of second um, major sort of destination in Albania, the, the far north, the Valbona Valley National Park. Um, fantastic um, area known as the, the Albanian Alps, really rugged, um, mountainous area with these amazing uh, beach forests um, and it's just a wonderful place to explore. This is our the hotel 
we stay at for four nights. Um, very, very well appointed. Both hotels we're using um, in, in, in Albania are, yeah, excellent, all en suite, um, all the facilities you'd expect, clean and comfortable, um, very well located. And just, you know, wandering around uh, just, just outside the hotel can, can reveal lots of uh, fantastic wildlife. So this is just another shot, just to just to show you the um, sort of the towering mountain right next to the hotel. It's it's very sort of steep sided. It's a, it's quite a narrow valley, um, and just spectacular scenery just from the balcony of the of the accommodation. Um, everywhere you look is just uh, just just wonderful views. You know, snow capped peaks and beautiful mountain streams, uh, and this fantastic um, beach woodland with some with some coniferous um, woodland in, in areas as well. Um, just in the woodland around the you know around the, the hotel, we've we'll seen species such as black woodpecker, also white backed woodpecker, um, lesser spotted woodpecker. There'll be four finches, um, red backed shrikes breed on the on the glades here, and um, so lots of species that lots of bird species just right on the doorstep for, for morning walks. Um, this is a rather grainy photo uh, that I that I took of a, a forest dormouse. This is a, a mammal that's a, that's possible to be to be found. Uh, mammals are fairly thin on the ground up here, um, to, uh, to be honest, but we, we've enjoyed northern white-breasted hedgehog, um, chamois, the Balkan race of chamois up on the peaks, um, and, and bear and wolf do inhabit the forest here. Um, one group's been lucky uh, to see wolf, but they're of course very, very tricky to see, but it's a, it's a very wild area, um, very little visited, um, and there's an awful lot to see. So we'll spend our days taking walks in the mountains. Um, we'll usually take four by four and um, to sort of get us as high as we can really. Um, we'll, on this particular walk we come up to this glade here um, in the vehicle and then head on off at these at these little trails um, to, to explore the area and, and again just enjoying everything we come across. Um, green underside blue just just one of many butterfly species we can hope to find um, and the beautiful checkered blue um, various various other species we can hope to find. Um, you know, large, large tortoiseshell, uh, quite numerous on, on one of my visits here. Some excellent uh, um, reptiles can be found. This is a European um, green lizard. And the bird life, again, as you, you know, as, as you're you know, heading up slightly in altitude, is very good, very good area for nutcracker. Um, we also, you know, we'll be seeing, we'll see ring oozel up here, water pipits. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's some, some fantastic bird life. And it's, it's probably the, uh, the place where I've probably enjoyed one of my most spectacular nature trek picnics. Um, I've, I've, I've been lucky enough to enjoy many on, the, on my tour leading um, in Europe and across the world, but this is a, this is a special one. Um, this is a, 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 the shepherd. He, he basically tends to his flock, um, lives up here right through the summer um, and, uh, and, and cooks some you know, local breads for us in his little kiln, um, knocks up some amazing salads with, with cheeses um, and uh, yeah serves it up for our group and it's a wonderful setting and a lovely you know lovely place to have some lunch and through an interpreter he, uh, he explains how he how his, uh, sheep have to you know avoid the attention of of the, of the local wolf pack um, and incredibly he, he was saying that uh, you know up to you know, a sheep every couple of months gets lost if he doesn't follow them you know 24 hours a day uh, making loud noises with his dog so it's a uh, you know quite a life up there i always include a a, a slide uh, with, a, with a snake, and this is it for Albania, uh, the wonderful nose horn viper. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of snakes, so I'm always looking for them, but don't worry, you do have to properly search for them to, to have luck, but they're often in these um, piles of rocks warming up, um, and on most trips um, you can see this species if you if you want to. Fantastic creature. Um, orchids, uh, botanically, very interesting, slightly better in the, if, if, on the May departure, um, a few more a few more flowering. And this is lady orchid, uh, but we see um, yeah lots of other lots of other spe species coral root, um, bird's nest, um, lax flowered, greater butterfly orchid, lots of different orchid species. This is Albanian lily, um, another speciality up in the mountains here. Hazel hen, um, it's another uh, another um, specialist bird we, we hope to find. Very tricky, very very secretive bird. Um, but uh, this is a, a photograph that, that, uh, that, that again that I've taken, and all these photos, all the, all the wildlife photos are taken either by myself or, or leaders or, or group members, and so none of them are stock images. This is a hazel hen scene walking up the uh, 
through the through the beech forest in the, in the mountains. And if it, again, if it starts if it starts to rain, um, keep your eye out for these guys coming out of the, the leaf litter. This is a, a fantastic fire salamander. Um, so it's a, a real class species to find. So following our, our four nights um, in the uh, in the in the Albanian Alps in the far north, we, uh, we, we it's time to head on our way. We're, we're heading we're heading back towards Tirana. Um, we we jump we jump onto the uh, onto this ferry. It's a it's a it's a, it's a it's a passenger ferry. So lots of different lots of people use this to you know, to, to move their supplies around. Um, it's uh, often you're, you're crammed on here with locals. And it's a fantastic experience heading out across across Lake Kamani. Um, it's actually a reservoir, um, but it's, it creates these wonderful reflections and again towering mountains. About seventy percent of Albania um, is is covered in mountains. Um, so it's a you know, it's a wonderful journey. And if you put it into Google, top ten boat journeys in the world. Um, this this boat journey is often featured. Um, it's a it's a, it's a fantastic uh, fantastic journey, quite an experience. People hopping on and off um, as they uh, as we go, just pulling up seemingly into sort of nowhere in particular, and then some locals hop off um, with with some supplies and, and start trekking off into the mountains to their sort of their their homes in the in this wonderful mountainous area. These chaps here transporting some, um, you know donkeys or, or, or horses, I think, across the lake. And we make our way back. We'll be looking out on that boat journey for um, species of you know, golden eagle cruising over. There's a colony of alpine swift there, a rock nut hatch when we, when, we make our, when, we, when we make landfall. And then we travel with a few stops um, back to the airport to finish the tour. Um, so that's the Albanian tour in a nutshell. And it's well worth adding on extensions to cover the, the south of the, uh, of the country. This is Butrint archeological site. Um, an ancient Greek settlement, um, and uh, it's a yeah very very interesting um, site to visit. UNESCO World Heritage Site, um, very popular, um, but it's somewhere we don't we don't cover. We can't sort of cover everywhere on our main um, seven night tour. So I, I offer it as an extension. And it's uh, it's well worth considering. And nearby at the uh, at the Butrint wetlands, again some 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 fantastic birding. There's some classic um, European species, squacko heron. Here and uh, and beta and lots of other species, penduline tits, um, whiskered and Caspian terns. Um, you know, the list goes on. It's uh, it, it's super, and you can then even get the ferry across to Corfu and fly home from there if you if you wish. It works very well. So that's a that's a sort of whistle stop through through Albania, um, and then heading across to Macedonia. Now we we run one tour to to North Macedonia, um, and that's our, our butterflies and birds holiday. Um, so it's focused on butterflies. I mean, we, we work with expert local guides who really know the best places to find a whole range of very special species. And then we're obviously enjoying the, the birds and other and other, uh, other taxa, other other species as we uh, as we head along. So we first of all head down to Bitola. And from here, we we access the Pelister National Park um, and the and the Glisica Plateau. Um, and it's uh, and then before heading to some more lowland areas and some gorges. Um, and, and open meadows over at Cavadasi here. Um, so it's, a, it's, a, it's another two centre holiday. So we start in the mountains um, again. So this is the, the a, a photo here of the, the Pelister um, National Park. And again, this is the four by four, the four by four here we travel in. We travel sort of part way into the mountains with four by fours and then um, enjoy, enjoy some spectacular walks, really breathtaking views. Our hotel is situated in, in, in the foothills of the National Park. Um, and again, we're very well appointed, um, you know, all en suite, all the facilities you'd expect. Hotel with some fantastic grounds. We always like to choose um, accommodation that, uh, you know, that has you know, you know, wildlife and habitat on the doorstep. So morning walks here can be, um, uh, can be very, very rewarding. Um, I've you know, you know, been birding from here and I remember one morning having a single tree with a middle spotted woodpecker, Syrian woodpecker, and lesser spotted all in the same tree. Um, golden Orioles, um, Hortland buntings, um, you know, you know many, many other species that, that, that are evading at the moment. But um, yeah, it's super, super birding on the doorstep and always a, always a lot to see. And then we just head out exploring. Um, and again, it's you're heading up in some fantastic habitat and just enjoying everything that we find. Um, this is um, Balkan copper. Um, one, one star species we hope to find. And Balkan fritillary, with this quite interesting wing shape, the way it holds its wings, often very angular like this, and 
Uh, the fantastic thing with butterfly tours is just endless uh, photographic opportunities, always posing on something, you know, on a, on a bright flower um, and offering some, um, some fantastic opportunities to take photos. Um, um, nut nutcracker here, um, you know, it's a star species and a species we very rarely miss as we work up through the, um, through the pine forests. Um, we, often, we often come across nutcrackers. And we'll walk all the way up to a, um, a tarn, quite high in the mountains here. Um, fantastic walk. Um, and uh, again, we're taking four by fours most of the way, so it's not too arduous. We sort of do the slightly easier last bit of the walk, but so it's a good stretch of the legs. Um, and it's a, uh, yeah, just a wonderful area. The, the, the cloud had come in a bit here when I took this photo, unfortunately, but that's the way it is in the mountains. And then we have a wonderful lunch all laid out in this, uh, in this mountain refuge. Um, High in the high in the Palestine National Park again, a very special place to have lunch, um, and it's uh, I like my lunches, and it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it's, it's superb. Um, local local guides here, the drivers that have driven us all the way up there, and D is fantastic with the butterflies, incredibly knowledgeable and a really nice chap. And we're all digging into a um, a, a nice a nice lunch high in the mountains. Um, it's all about the upland, uplands here. So this is the this is a photo of the. Of the Galicica National Park. Um, that national park is sandwiched between the two lakes. So from the top, you can actually look out over Ockrid and Prespa Lake, and there's a, a road that's, that, that, that joins the two. It's a very, um, very accessible national park, and we'll spend time again focusing on the butterflies. So this is Idus blue, and one of the many species of blue that we can hope to see on a, on a, on a butterfly tour to Macedonia. Uh, Chapman's, Zephyr blue. Eastern Baton Blue, um, just to name just to name a few. And we can expect to see around 100, 120 um, butterfly species uh, in in in, the, in a week in Macedonia. So a huge number. Um, and uh, I remember we had yeah, I think it was 59 in a species in a single day. Um, so it's a quite remarkable number of different species. Again, the bird life up here. So family of red-backed shrikes here. Um, the, the, the female feeding a youngster. So there's always some wonderful birds to see. There'll be rock, um, rock thrush up here, um, water pipids, um, waterland bunting, um, some, some some really nice, um, really nice bird species. There's always a chance of a, of a raptor overhead. Esper's marbled white, another sort of fairly you know, range rest restricted specialist species um, in this national park, which we hope to find. And again, botanically very interesting. So we're not overlooking anything here. We're 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 we're, we're, we're looking out for. Um, yeah, everything we could come across. This is the, the wonderful Balkan um, lizard orchid in full flower. And at the time of our visit, we're visiting in, in, uh, in sort of mid-June, and we've got a, a good chance of seeing it in flower, a spectacular orchid. So we, we want to take in the, um, you know, a bit of culture as well. So we head into, in, into Ockrid, and it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful city, um, full of these fantastic churches. It has 365 churches, so they say. So a different church for every day of the week. Quite remarkable for a, you know, a fairly small settlement. It's lovely cobbled streets, and we'll take, we'll have lunch, lunch here, and just enjoy um, experiencing this, uh, this fantastic city with magnificent views over the lake. And um, one of the oldest, um, and in fact deepest lakes um, in Europe. And some really, some really wonderful views. Um, and there's always wildlife around as well. In fact, when I was taking this photo, there's a couple of water bunting perched on top of this. Um, a bush here. There's there'll be uh, black neck grebes out on the out on the lake, um, as well as uh, lots of other species. Um, there's a, a small sort of woodland, um, and and just on the trees lying in the streets, often the Syrian woodpecker can be found. And then we we head on then. Um, we have four nights, sort of exploring those 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 upland habitats and and the lakes. Um, there's some more great birding um, actually around around the lake, so I haven't really got time to cover. And then we we finish um, with three nights at this uh, at this working uh, winery, um, really you know, uh, you know, cracking hotel, some fantastic grounds, and again just lots to see on the doorstep. And we'll get out exploring sort of the lower lower elevations, bringing another range of butterfly species um, and uh, and birds, of course. A black-headed bunting here, um, really quite common at these. Uh, these lower elevations. This is just taken just outside the outside the hotel. Um, Kotchke's gecko. Um, if you if you're into your um, reptiles, um, so it's a really really great tour for, for reptiles and amphibians. Um, this has got sort of a long long fingers here. The Kotchke's gecko, very common around the hotel. 
Um, and then it's out for the butterflies, of course. Uh, this is Southern White Admiral, a really striking species that we saw just on just on morning walks from the from the hotel. There's, a, there's, a, there's an awful lot to see. And this is uh, Macedonia's only endemic species, not particularly striking. There's far more uh, brightly coloured butterflies, but um, this, this is a rather special one. This is Macedonian grayling, and we'll head into a sort of a quarry area and sort of yeah, it's uh, it, again, it's it, it's quite. Quite, quite, quite a walk up through a um, up, up through sort of a slightly mountainous area, and you've got a good chance of finding these in, in the rocky areas. Um, this is another uh, uh, you know, rather special species, Ripart's anomalous blue, um, and again, always posing really nicely for often, often posing really nicely for photos. And you can come away from a tour such as this with a whole bank of, uh, of fantastic images. And this is eastern greenish black tip. Um, another another rather special species of the area, which we make a big effort to find, and that's that, that is really the focus of this uh, of this itinerary. Um, the the local guide is is wonderful at knowing all the areas to find uh, to find the, uh, the, you know, the star species. Wonderful you know, flower rich meadows that we'll explore, um, covered in orchids here. Um, just uh, yeah, just full of full of life everywhere you visit. Very low intensity um, agriculture, um, just teeming with insects. And uh, just, just you know, you know, really exciting species to find uh, at every turn, really. And we'll stop. We'll, 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 there'll be a mix of, uh, of breaking up the day with picnic lunches, and also stopping off at restaurants, um, and also places that just seem like people's houses. We'll stop off, and they'll um, they'll just bring out a whole range of different dishes, and we'll and we'll and we'll dig in, and we sort of get to experience um, sort of you know local life a little bit along the way um, as we do that. Um, this is a rather spectacular um, owl fly. Um, this can often be found out in the sort of you know, the, the meadows and, and grasslands, a really striking insect. Um, again, um, this is marbled fritillary, posing um, beautifully for photos. It's another, another wonderful species. Um, and um, the hermit, uh, some, cranky, some brilliant butterfly names. Um, hermit is, a, is, is another one of those. And this is one of the specialities that we that we search for in the sort of um, slightly lower elevations in these rocky gorges. This is um, little tiger blue, fantastic little butterfly, really really tiny with the with the with, these, with the, the, the tail there at the back. So we make a make a big effort to find this species and one of the sort of stars of the trip. And this is a rather grainy photo of a, of a, of a long length buzzard, but the uh, the raptor watching is very good. We visit a, a, a vulture feeding station during the tour. I we'll hope to see Egyptian and, uh, and griffin vultures, and there's a good chance of seeing um, Eastern Imperial Eagle um, and, uh, and, and black kites and other um, other species as well. So it's a it's a really great range of, of birds along the way too, um, and just a fantastic mix. Um, and yeah, back to the butterflies. Another uh, another star here. This is a spotted fritillary um, posing beautifully for us, and so it's a yeah a really a really fantastic. All round natural history holiday covering covering all the main habitats really of the country. Um, so I'll leave it there. Um, I'll finish with this slide, um, just showing um, another fantastic scene really, another a mountainous scene, and, and one of the group members just uh, um, enjoying that. Um, thank you very much for listening. That's a whistle stop tour through Albania and Macedonia. Um, I, could, I, could, I could talk for much longer on both. And if you have any questions at all, please um, please do ask. And um, and thank you very much for listening. Well, um, I'm now going to pass you over to, um, to Paul, um, who's going to talk to you about Romania. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you very much. Um, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Just bear with me one second. Hopefully that'll work. Right, okay, cool. Okay, it's good evening. Thank you very much for my Paul Stanbury. I um, um, joined Nature Trek back in 1996, so uh, quite a few years ago now. Um, and I'm an operations manager. I look after a wide range of, of our tours, um, in particular, um, Africa, um, quite a few uh, Central and South American destinations, um, Canada cruises, 
Um, I particularly, Eastern Europe is a particular favorite of mine. And I've traveled quite extensively uh, around um, Eastern Europe over the years. Um, this evening, I'm gonna talk to you about um, two fabulous countries over in Eastern Europe, starting with Romania, um, the uh, home of the Danube Delta and the wonderful Carpathian Mountains. And then after the break, I will continue with um, an overview of our tours and the wildlife that um, you can see on a, on a trip to Poland. But starting with, uh, with Romania, so here we go, here's start with the, with the geography. Um, Romania, Eastern Europe on the edge of the, of the Black Sea. Um, it's about a, a two and a half or so hour flight from, um, from the UK. We land here in, in Bucharest. In, in the capital. Um, and then the, so our most popular tour to Romania focuses on the two of the country's very best um, wildlife um, areas. The Carpathian Mountains, um, which form this sweeping green arc through the country. Um, um, and the fabulous Danube Delta over here on the, on the coast of the, of the Black Sea. Um, we run these trips um, throughout the spring from April through to um, early June. Um, and then again in August and, and September. And no matter what season you go, there's always a fabulous variety of birds and other wildlife um, to enjoy. So just, right, okay. so. So, these, so I'm going to talk you through the Danube Delta Carpathian Mountains uh, tour, um, but we run other trips to, to Romania as well, um, a tour that just focuses on the Carpathians, so it spends a whole week in the Carpathians at the end of May, um, early June, um, and another tour as well focusing on, on butterflies, and also one in the winter time looking for, um, for the red-breasted geese that winter um, in the Danube Delta. But on, the, on our 10-day Carpathian and Danube Delta tour, we start here in the Carpathian Mountains. Um, it's about a three hour drive north from, from Bucharest. Um, so wonderful, wonderful scenery. Um, the mountains stretch for over 600, um, sorry, the, yeah, the, the um, Carpathian Mountains uh, stretch this arc through, um, through Romania, um, covering about 600 miles and reaching over two and a half thousand meters in height. Uh, we are based in a town called Zarnesh, which is right in the heart of the Transylvanian Carpathians. Um, we're based there for three nights while we head out and explore the forests and the, and the meadows and the rocky crags in search of the, of the wildlife and the bird life that, that lives here. Um, I'm often asked, what sort of transport do we use on a nature trek tour? Well, here we go. Um, no, actually, it isn't. Of course, it, will, it would be great for air conditioning and window seat for all. But this is just to illustrate that um, the Carpathian is still one of those few areas in the country where you can find very typical agriculture and low intensity agriculture. Now, I've, I've been going to Romania for over 20 years, and 20 years ago, um, this was a common site. Farmers um, um, using horse-drawn carts to transport their hay and, and, and animals around. Sadly, it's becoming an increasingly rare site over, over in Romania as the country uh, westernizes, um, but it's still, it's still something you will see in the, it should see in the Carpathians. Um, most of our tours to the Carpathians start with a walk up Zarnesh Gorge, a spectacular cleft through the, through the mountain. Um, a very, actually very gentle, uh, easy walk with some, some great birds and, and wildlife to enjoy. There are redback shrikes down in, down in the lowlands. There are alpine swifts uh, wheeling overhead. We've got um, gray-headed woodpecker. We've got crag martins as well, ring oozle. Um, but the main bird we're looking for here is the, the wonderful wool creeper. Um, and if you're after seeing a wall creeper, then it's better to come early and late in the season because they, they come down to the lower altitudes to, in the winter and the early spring. Um, but um, as the summer progresses, they move further up in the mountains uh, to breed. And we've had some groups that have had fabulous views of wall creepers in the Sarnesh Gorge, fluttering around on the rock face right next to them, even down on the path right, uh, right out in front. Uh, black woodpecker, um, a common 
in the in the Carpathian Mountains and a variety of other woodpeckers as well. So grey-headed, three-toed are seen here on occasion too. There are a few uh, owls to enjoy. There's the, the Ural owl. Um, they, they, they're a fairly widespread bird um, in, in the forest. Um, and we'll go take you out on, a, on evening excursions, early morning trips, and this is the time of day which you may well see a Ural owl if you're, if you're fortunate. Um, I would say we will take you out on an early evening excursion um, and over to uh, to a hide that's up in the up in the mountains. Um, and in front of the hide, the the local foresters put a little bit of a little bit of honey and some oats, um, and um, bears come down, descend out of the forest um, to, to 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 take those uh, those tidbits. Um, and it gives one of the best opportunities really anywhere in the whole of Europe to, to, to see brown bears. Romania has the, the largest population of brown bears um, anywhere in Europe. They're common throughout um, the, the Carpathian range. Um, and our groups have always been very fortunate over the years to get great views of these uh, amazing animals. And so occasionally, if you're fortunate, you may even see a distant bear uh, out on a, on a distant far hillside when you're walking, but the best opportunity today is to go to this hide um, in, the, in, in, in the mountains and watch them um, from there. And the trip to the hide also does actually give a, the, probably the best, the best chance as well of the Ural owl, the bird I showed you earlier. We've also had groups that have seen wolf um, from, the, from the hide too. So it is really a, a, a fabulous experience. Um, Tom showed you a lot of the butterflies um, that you're likely to see um, in Macedonia and um, Albania. Well, of course, the butterflies in, in Romania are as, as prolific and as colourful um, as well. Um, and on all of our trips throughout Eastern Europe, whereas birds, of course, are one of the primary focuses, but we're also looking at the other wildlife that we can see um, as well, the, um, the butterflies and the botany too. Um, the botany up in high peaks of the Carpathians is absolutely fabulous. So if you're particularly keen on botany, then I would recommend, say, the, the week-long trip that we do um, to, the, to the mountains, um, which runs from late May through into early June. We'll take you up onto the high slopes, um, and there's a wonderful range of, of alpine flowers to enjoy up here, as, one, as well as some fa fabulous um, alpine scenery. And of course, there's always that little bit of culture to look at as well. Romania is a fascinating country to explore, and you can't go to Transylvania uh, without going and having a look at Bran Castle. Um, the alleged haunt of Vlad the Impaler, on whom the legend of Count Dracula is based, although when I say alleged, actually, chances are he never actually even set foot in the place. Um, but still, it's a the uh, village of Bran itself is, is, is well worth visiting um, and you can't really go to the region without at least a drive by or visit a quick visit to the castle. Um, I mentioned this trip that we do that lasts for a, a whole week in the Carpathians um, and this is where we stay up in a little village called Magura so you're based in this hotel for a whole week with, with wonderful views of the mountains all around you. But eventually, say after three nights in the mountains on our 10 day trip, we descend out of the mountains, head out onto the plains on the long drive to the Danube Delta. And you've got a very a total different change of habitat here, rollers perched up on the, on the wires. You're, out, you're going out into a flat step-like habitat where Isabelline wheat ears are, are running around on the ground. And the attractive little suslik um, is the, it's a common um, mammal to look out for, the little ground squirrel um, which uh, sadly for this uh, poor little creature is the staple diet of most of the birds of prey that, that live in the region. And then so it takes about a day to drive from the Carpathians down to uh, the Danube Delta um, and we'll um, first of all base ourselves in, in Tulsa for a night. And Tulsa is right on the edge of the Danube Delta which is an absolutely fabulous uh, wetland um, area. It covers over 4,000 square kilometers in, in total, which is larger than the Camargue and the Cota Doniana, Camargue in France and the Cota Doniana in Spain uh, put together. It's a vast area of huge reed, reed beds, willow lined channels, dotted with large eutrophic lakes covered in water lilies. Uh, it really is an absolutely fabulous spot. Um, 
and also um, and so I, and to explore the um, the reserve the um, the delta um, there's no better way really than to um, hop onto a, a floating hotel and head out into the delta um, um, on on this uh, on the floating hotel and we have three nights on the float hotel you're towed along by by a tug um, and initially so you leave from Tulsha you head along the Salina channel which is the big main channel of the Danube um, um, which heads from Tulsha out into the Black Sea but our plan is to leave the main channel as quickly as possible and they say to head out into the vast rebeds and willow lined um, um, channels so being a boat, you know, the, the cabins are not large, but they're perfectly comfortable. They're en suite, they have their own shower and toilet. Um, they're all air conditioned as well. Um, so they, they're perfectly comfortable and it really does allow you to be right out into the middle, into the heart of the Delta. You're waking up, you can wake up in the morning, go out on deck and you're surrounded by the birds and the fantastic wildlife of the, of, of the region. Huge numbers of white pelicans uh, breed breed in the delta, and flocks of these amazing birds circling overhead is a very very common sight. We'll also be looking out for the much rare Dalmatian pelican. And there's a globally important population of Dalmatian pelicans breeding um, in the delta, along with a bumper population of of, um, of pygmy cormorants and a um, globally uh, threatened species, lots of little bitterns, squacko herons, night herons, spoonbills, all those wonderful um, herons that, that we associate with Eastern and Southern Europe. Pygmy cormorant here that I, that I mentioned earlier, commonly seen through, throughout your, your, your time. Um, I'll say we head out on smaller boats and get into some of these fabulous eutrophic lakes where there are often colonies of, uh, of marsh terns breeding, colonies of black terns are, are common and the wonderful white winged black tern, uh, one, of my, one of my favorite of all, of all European birds. These are absolutely dazzling little birds when they're flittering over the lake, the white, contra white wings contrast really very sharply with the jet black body. There are whiskered terns here as well. So you get to see all three species of marsh tern. Penduline tits um, call from, from the reedbed, they're, they're very common. Um, the reedbeds are also home to great reed warblers, savvy's warblers, marsh warbler, river warbler, so a whole plethora of those um, acrocephalus and lucastella warblers. Um, there are raptors here as well, the wonderful red-footed falcon. There are colonies of redfoots um, in, in the delta and they're, they're commonly seen in, in the area. Um, and white-tailed eagles as well, and loads of marsh harriers. You really can't look over a reed bed without seeing half a dozen marsh harriers flying around. And then we end this particular tour uh, exploring a very different habitat. We've done the mountains, we've done the delta, and now we're going out into the steppe and enjoying this, the steppe um, of the of the of the Dubrovnik region and the and the Babadag um, plateau. And this is a mix of grassland, uh, little rocky hills dotted with these. Um, 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 wooded wooded hills as well. Um, a lot of lowland birds, um, birds we really we associate with Eastern and Southern Europe, such as the fantastic colourful bee eater, uh, European bee eater. Every every telegraph pole has got a roller stuck on top of it. There are lesser grey shrikes out on the wires as well. Autumn bunting singing from the treetops. This is a fabulous place for um, for raptors. It's Babadag and and um, the Brodge is one of the best area for raptors really anywhere in, in Europe. Levant Sparrowhawk here on the left, Eastern Imperial Eagle uh, on the right, but also short-toed, booted eagles, long-legged buzzards, honey buzzards, so a wonderful range of, of different birds of prey to, to enjoy. Other smaller species as well, we've got uh, somber tit uh, here, and uh, also pied wheat ears, plenty of isabelline wheat ears, stone curlew, chance of, uh, of, of, of rock thrush, um, so lots and lots of stuff to, um, to enjoy. There are two also on the edge of the Black Sea, there are several very large lakes which are also fabulous for, for waders. Butterflies uh, and are abundant out on the, out on the Babadag and the Dubrovnik area. It's, a very, it's very hot down here so it's particularly good for butterflies. This is a marbled fritillary. 
and say down down on the Black Sea coast, we're also looking for waders. If you go in the autumn time in particular, uh, the way the variety of waders that pass through on the Black Sea is absolutely fabulous. Marsh sandpipers, even broad-billed sandpipers, if if you're lucky, mixed in amongst common or curly sandpipers, little stints, um, dunlin sandling, all those birds that we um, that pass through in, in in the autumn time, spotted red shanks, ruff, etc. So I see it's it's eight fifteen. Very good timing. I'll I'll end my piece on Romania with a, a sunset over over the Danube Delta. So an absolutely fabulous country for birds. Um, one of my favourite places in eastern Eastern Europe. Um, it has a, such a, a lovely variety of different habitats within a fairly easy reach. Still unspoilt and still uh, absolutely um, say, uh, full of birds and other wildlife. So I will leave there and the um, end there. And uh, so we're going to stop now and just have a 15 minute break. And I will pass you over back to Sarah again. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, you just brought back some fantastic memories of a holiday I had to Romania two years ago where I stayed in Magura, uh, where you just mentioned and Yule owls and brown bears and uh, really pristine um, sort of primitive forest there, absolutely fantastic, great place to visit, I'd highly recommend it. Um, apologies to any of you who are seeing a grey band across the top of the screen there, um, sort of centimetre deep grey band, uh, we'll see if we can resolve that for when we resume. Uh, I feel it may be Paul's computer, so there's always one. We'll see if we can sort that out for you. It's fine on my machine. <laughs> I'm sure it does, Paul, but a few people are saying in the comments they can see it. So we'll see if Thank we can you. sort that out for you. As Paul has said, we're going to a 10 minute interval now. So go and top up your tea or coffee or your glass of wine. And we'll be back at 25 past eight. Okay, thank you.
Right, well, welcome back, everybody. Um, apologies if any of you were uh, listening to some very loud music then. It was supposed to be some quite nice, soothing Albanian traditional music, but I gather from a quick chat to Paul um, that it was actually quite loud. So it was very, very quiet on my computer, but sorry if it uh, startled any, any of you, made you jump out of your seats. But uh, we will now resume the evening. Um, and Paul, you're going to be taking us now to Poland. Ah, Angela says that the music was lovely. Thank you. That was great to hear. <laughs> great. Yeah, thank you very much, Sarah. Right, I'm going to have another go at uh, sharing my screen. One second. One second. Right, here we go. Okay, right, okay. Yes, um, yeah, for my second, second part of my talk, I'm going to um, talk to you about Poland. Um, uh, another, another country that's um, fabulous for, for birds. It's say, on the eastern side of Europe, so it will give us a uh, a very eastern flavour in the in the sort of birds and and, and wildlife that that we're after seeing, um, and um, it's a trip. It's a country nature trek has been travelling to for as long as I've been with the company. So well over say, 25, probably 30 years, we've been doing trips to to Poland. Um, sorry, just one second. So we. We run a variety of, of tours uh, to Poland at different times of the year. Um, in the spring, we have a tour that focuses on the two of the key regions of the, of the country, two key reserves of the country, the Bielowieża Forest over here, right on the eastern side um, of, of, of Poland near the border with uh, Bel Belarus, um, and the Biebrze Marshes, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which are to the, to the north, um, west of, uh, of Bialystok. Um, in the autumn, we visit Bielowieża and we also go up to the um, to the Baltic coast, up around Gdansk. Um, and we have another tour that um, goes in search of lynx and mammals and birds right down in the southeastern corner um, of the country um, down here. So we do a wide variety of different different holidays to to Poland. Um, all of which begin, of course, with a flight to, to Warsaw, the capital. Here close up on the eastern side of Poland, um, the region we, we focus on for our popular Poland in spring holiday, um, which, um, which departs in, um, in, in May, a time of the year when the breeding birds have arrived back on their breeding grounds, the, 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 the waders and the other birds are passing through on their way further north. We um, say stay in Bielowieża, first of all, down here on the edge of the Bielowieża forest. Um, we visit the Szemanówka Reservoir, which is up here, and then travel up to the um, Biebrze Marshes, which run from the Narinsky National Park up through here um, up to the north, a uh, northwest of, of Bialystok. But on the journey from Warsaw to Bielowieża, um, we're going to be passing by lots of white stork nests, and white storks are fortunately quite common still in, in Poland. Um, and the the local people always put up white stork platforms for the birds to nest on. It's good luck to have white storks nesting either in your village or in your in your garden. And our first base in the spring is the wonderful uh, Bielowieża uh, National Park. The largest, the Bielowieża Forest is the largest remaining tract of original European forest uh, left in Europe. And it's Poland's oldest national park. In Poland, it covers over 580 square kilometers and it continues into a vast tract of woodland over the border in, in Belarus. And the, the real highlight of, your, of the time here is the opportunity to explore some true primeval 
untouched old growth European forest. Um, and that's in an area called the Strict Reserve in the Bielovesia National Park itself. And you're only allowed into this area um, with, a, with a guide. We go first thing in the morning. And it's a wonderful experience to, to walk through some absolutely totally untouched forest, which is incredibly rare, um, a very, very rare habitat in, in Europe. Now the bird life here is a mix of the familiar and the unfamiliar. Um, there are lots of wood warblers, uh, the bird that we get um, down here in, in, in Hampshire in the New Forest. Um, but in Bielovesia, they are, are, are very common. It's one of the, the, the commonest sounds to hear as you walk into the forest um, in the early morning. In the UK, down in the south, we get pied flycatchers. In Bielovesia, they have the wonderful collared flycatcher. Um, here, the male easily identified with that broad white collar um, around its neck. And also the wonderful little red-breasted flycatcher. So the forest is full of the really interesting um, small, small passerines, small birds. Um, I would imagine for birders, when you say Bielovesia, it brings to mind woodpeckers. Um, this has to be one of the best places really anywhere in, in the whole of Europe uh, to see um, European woodpeckers. In fact, you can see pretty much all the, of Europe's woodpeckers in the Bielovesia with, with, with varying ease. Um, in fact, we do a trip, a long weekend, which is called Poland's Primeval Forest, and it operates in late April, sorry, late, yeah, late April, um, early May, and that focuses in particular on finding the woodpeckers as well as a variety of other birds. This is one of the key species to look out for, the white-backed woodpecker, um, smaller middle spotted woodpecker, there's also lesser spotted, great spotted, of course, um, but for the bird, really, the one everybody wants to see is the is the three-toed woodpecker. Um, and this is the um, a quite a quite a, a rare species, but they they are frequently seen in the Bielovesia. But the trickiest one to see is Syrian woodpecker, the one that Tom said was commoner common down uh, further south in in in, in Macedonia. Um, since there's such a wonderful variety of habitats um, in the Bielovesia. Not only forests, but, uh, but wet meadows as well. Um, you're going to get a wide variety of, uh, of different birds of prey here. Lesser spotted eagle. This is a, a lesser spotted eagle. They are they're, they're common in the in the Bielovesia. There are also plenty of, 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 of honey buzzards, common buzzards, and, and Montague's harriers, a variety of other species too. Um, on one day, we'll go up to the uh, a reservoir um, to the north of Bielovesia called the Shemanufka uh, Reservoir. Uh, that's a fabulous place in the spring. It attracts loads of different migrant birds, wading birds, marsh terns, um, and also storks as well. You'll often see feeding black storks at uh, Shemanufka. The black storks actually do nest in the Bielovesia forest. Um, Tom showed you the hazel grouse and, and hazel grouse, uh, uh, they're quite widespread throughout Eastern Europe, they're quite, they are difficult to see though, more often than not you'll just hear, hear a very uh, high pitched piping whistle, but if you're lucky then hopefully you'll get to see the bird as well. Um, and your wood warbler. Um, well, if you're very lucky, there's another species of Philoscopus warbler that uh, occurs in um, Bielovesia, right at the very, very western extremity of its range. And this is this is the greenish warbler, um, quite an aptly named bird, a, a small warbler, similar in size to wood warbler, greenish in colour, but with a, a single single uh, wing band. In Shemenovka, um, it's, this is a uh, key bird to see up at the reservoir. It's another species actually that's been spreading further uh, further east, sorry, further west over the years. And we're again right on the edge of their breeding range in, in Poland. And this is the uh, the wonderful citrine wagtail, um, a beautiful, the males are very, very striking bird, bright lemon yellow on the head and the breast and gray on the back. And they're quite uh, easily seen in Szemanowka and also up in the Biebschen marshes. There are interesting mammals to, to enjoy here as well. Wild boar are common out in the forest and often seen in the early morning and late evening. And we'll be in particular going out to look for um, European bison. Um, 
And European bison is the largest mammal in, in the whole of Europe. Bielovatia um, held the very, very last European bison, the last, last wild European bison, but they became extinct here in 1919. Fortunately, there are about 50 or so left, left in captivity. They, there was a captive breeding program was started and they were re-released back into the Bielovatia again in the, in the 1950s. And they've done very well since then. Uh, they've been, um, populations have been moved from translocated from Bielovatia to other areas in Poland. And there are now over 700 animals in the Bielovatia forest. And there's not uncommon to, to see them, especially again in the early morning and the evening when they venture out of the forest into the, into the meadows to graze. Fantastic butterflies in Poland. We do a dedicated butterfly tour to Poland. Um, this is a scarce fritillary. And then after spending some time in the Bielofacia forest, we move north uh, west up towards Bialystok and over to the Biebja River. Um, the Biebja National Park is again one of the most it's a fabulous area to, to explore. Um, it's one of the largest continuous expanses of riverine marshland um, left in Europe, covering over a thousand square kilometers. And it's at its best in the spring when the rivers are flooded, flooding the wet meadows, attracting in wonderful variety of wading birds and marsh terns um, and other species. In May, you'll see the rough um, displaying the males resplendent in their, their wonderful uh, breeding dress, which they, they don't actually keep, keep for very long. Once they've finished lecking, they start to molt and, the, and they tend to lose the ruffs. But there are, there are rough breeding in Bielovasia, but there are more birds that move through Poland um, as they're moving north um, um, up into the Baltic states. But you should see parties of rough displaying out on, on marshland. Wonderful little white wing black terns um, uh, nest here as well. You'll see, you should see all three marsh terns as you can do down in, in down in Romania. And there are two key birds that birds particularly want to see in the in the Biebsha marshes. One of these is a little tiger striped uh, aquatic warbler. Um, an increasingly rare bird, a bird that is sadly declining in numbers, but um, the Biebsha marshes is one of its strongholds. And they live in the sedge beds um, in the wetter areas of the, uh, um, of, of, of the, of the, the reserve. And they are, say, well, groups are norm normally do see them. Commoner species are the wonderful blue throat. It's quite widespread in the Biebsha marshes. Um, the birds over in, in, in Poland are of the eastern race with the white spot on the, on the throat rather than the uh, rufous spot that, that we get over in, in Western Europe. And then the other key bird we will go to see and we'll go out in the evening to look for this one when the mists have started to rise um, over the marshes. We'll go out at dusk um, to, a, to a particular spot where we'll listen and hope to see the wonderful great snipe and the great snipe they breed out in the marshes they're very secretive for the majority of the day but in the evening they, the males gather together to lek to display um, and they make this really bizarre clicking noise uh, it's very very unbird like and it's a very surreal experience to be close to a great snipe lek um, and in the, in the spring, normally the grass is quite low, so uh, you should see the birds, they, they, they hide in the grass, they click, 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 and then they will leap into the air and jump back, jump up and down again. And it's a really f fabulous uh, experience, and one of the, the key highlights of any trip to, uh, to, to this part of Eastern Europe. And new mammals to see here as well, the European beaver is quite common in, in Biebsha, as it is in throughout um, much of Poland. So that sort of gives you an overview of the of the Poland in spring tour, but say we also do a variety of other Poland tours as well. We do the Poland in autumn, which goes up to the Baltic coast and focusing in particular on migration. Lots of cranes move through Poland um, in, in September time. Um, and there are also lots of passerines in the Biebsha marshes is drier, but still has a lot of birds, a lot of things to enjoy. The Elevation forest is a little bit quieter because the birds aren't singing, but again, owls and woodpeckers and still things to enjoy there. Up on the Baltic coast, you're going to get lots of wading birds moving through, plenty of curlew, sandpipers, little stints, um, along with, a, with little gulls and um, plenty of other species too. 
We do trips in the winter time to Poland when hopefully everything will be covered in snow, wonderful landscapes to enjoy the, the birds and the other wildlife. Great time for mammals. If you want to see elk, the same um, European elk, then this is the time to go. Great time to see bison as well because they're not quite so secretive in the winter. They come out of the forest. They're also, um, there's the, the foresters give them supplemental feeding so they could be quite um, easy to see. And a great time as well to go looking for some of the, the predators of the forest, the very elusive species such as wolf and, um, and, and lynx. And we've, we have had some groups that have seen wolf and lynx in the spring and, and the autumn. We've had groups in Bielowesia. One group were driving along a track in the Bielowesia in the bus. They looked behind them and there was a lynx sitting on the track behind them and wolf as well as seen on occasion. But if you particularly want to see lynx, then uh, Tom's doing a great trip down to southeastern Poland to the Bizkabi National Park, right in the southeastern corner of the country, um, which is one of the strongholds for lynx in, in the whole of, whole of Poland. And you go out on night drives, spotlighting, and looking for lynx and wolf, and there should be bison around us too. So if you're particularly keen on mammals, particularly want to see lynx, then that's the one to look out for. And that trip goes in, in March and April. So I'll end once again with a sunset, a sunset shot this time over the Biebja marshes in the spring. And thank you very much uh, for listening. If you have any questions on Romania or, or Poland or any um, other countries, then please do let us know. Um, I'll try and answer as many questions over the next half an hour as I can, and we'll get, run through some after the at the end of the of the show as well. So thank you very much. I will pass you now over to my colleague David Phillips. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. OK, I'll uh, just share my screen with you. OK, so just to introduce myself, uh, my name, as Paul just said, David Phillips. Uh, I've been working for uh, Nature Trek now for the past uh, four and a half years. Um, I work in, in the office, but uh, lead a few tours uh, and manage tours that we run in, in parts of uh, uh, Northern Europe, Iceland, Norway, uh, Eastern Europe, um, from Finland through to um, through, through uh, Belarus and uh, Estonia, down to uh, Hungary, um, some tours in, in Greece, uh, and then some further afield. So Georgia is where I'll be speaking about in a short while. Uh, but I also run a few tours elsewhere to so places like Taiwan and Namibia. Uh, and indeed, I also put together tours for eclipses, but that's something that uh, I could talk on uh, endlessly, uh, but we don't have that time for that tonight, unfortunately. Um, however, I will start speaking about Hungary. So uh, this is a, a destination that we um, uh, run a number of different uh, tours to. Uh, and uh, if I just can make this work, scroll down. Bear with me, that doesn't seem to be uh, uh, updating. I'll just unshare it a moment and see if that helps. Ah, right, maybe it's caught up with me. Let me just check whether or not that's functioning. It is, so that's lovely. Right, okay, so Hungary, um, it's right in the center of Europe um, and surrounded by a number of the countries that we've already spoken about this evening. Capital Budapest, uh, and many of you may have been there. It's a popular place to go to for a city break, um, but it's also a part of a very, very interesting country. Uh, a fairly small population, 10 million, and an area that's probably about the size of Ireland. Uh, so it's sort of reasonably sparsely populated once you get out from the uh, from, from the capital and from any of the, the major towns there. Uh, here we see on a physical map uh, of, of Eastern Europe. Um, Paul's already discussed the sort of the Carpathian Mountains, that big arc of uh, uh, mountains that run through Romania. Well, they form the sort of eastern uh, boundary uh, of Hungary and the Alps, of course, off to the west uh, and the Balkans to the south. So really the countries. Um, so sandwiched by all the different places that we've sort of spoken about this evening. Um, and, and it's a largely flat country, uh, apart from a few sort of hills in the north, which uh, we'll talk about. 
Uh, it, it's a country that is, is, is largely flat and, and, and a part of a, a, a big plain, a big uh, area of steppe, which is in fact the second largest area of, of wild steppe uh, and grass, grassland and, and, uh, and wetland in, in, uh, in Europe, the second largest. Uh, it's got a couple of major rivers running through it. So the Danube, of course, uh, which rises over in southern Germany and, and goes out towards the, uh, the Danube Delta into the Black Sea. And it passes right through the center of Hungary and through the center of Budapest. Uh, and the other major river uh, of Hungary is the Tisha River. Uh, and, and that rises in the Ukraine and then flows through Hungary south, uh, sorry, from the northeast down to the south uh, and joins the Danube down there in, in uh, Serbia. Uh, not far from Belgrade. So we run uh, six different tours uh, in Hungary. Um, I'll only talk about two of them this evening uh, and, and one of them only briefly, but uh, we do them in, in a number of different seasons for a number of different taxa, for birds, for butterflies, uh, and, and for other small mammals, bats, uh, for, for instance. And, uh, and indeed, uh, one of the a new tour for us this year uh, first of its kind in uh, 2021 will be in June, uh, and it's the Great Mayfly Emergence. Um, you may have seen uh, on a, a, a BBC documentary um, by David Attenborough many years ago um, about insects. He uh, he opened had an opening sequence in which he was on the river, close one of the tributaries of the Tisha River, uh, and all around him were. Uh, an emergence of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions uh, of, of giant mayflies. Uh, and this is quite a, a spectacle uh, to behold and happens every year towards the end of June. Uh, and this tour that we've put together uh, in coordination with, with Oliver Smart, who's a, a great natural photographer, nature photographer, uh, and indeed many of the photographs I'll show now are, 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 are taken by him. Uh, he will run this tour for us, or he will, he will lead the tour, I should say, uh, and, and uh, help you if you wish to photograph the mayflies. But it's also, he's a, a great general naturalist. Uh, and so we'll be looking at all the nature uh, in central uh, parts of Hungary during that tour. But it is focusing on the mayflies in terms of the timing. Uh, and uh, as I say, that happens around the end of June, uh, different points in the river. Uh, see the eruption at different times and it depends a little bit on the temperature uh, and, and the, the currents within the water. So, um, so local people who are uh, out there are able to help guide us to the appropriate um, places to, uh, to, to go to on various dates in which they would expect to see this sort of great emergence of, of, of the may mayflies. Um, they, they spend, the species spends about sort of two or three years at the bottom of the, of the river uh, in the larval stage as a nymph and uh, basically on, in the course of a very short space of time, maybe only a few hours, the males first appear from the water uh, and they fly to uh, uh, branches of the neighbouring of the vegetation around the river. They, they lose one of their skins uh, and then they fly in search of females uh, so that they can complete the, uh, the life cycle that they can breed with the females and the females lay eggs. And all of this happens in a very short space of time because the, the, the males, the, the adults uh, of the mayfly have no uh, ability to, to eat, they have no mouth parts. So they basically have to uh, mate with a, with, 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 uh, with a female uh, and lay eggs and that is the end of, of their life. Um, and, and during the course of the tour, you will see vast numbers of them erupting, but also sadly, you could say sadly, but it's part of the life cycle. They will then, as I say, die uh, and fall back to the water. The, the photograph on the right is the, uh, the, the, the old skins of the, the males that they've discarded before finding that final sort of uh, body to, uh, to be able to fly out of the water and, and in search of the females. And, uh, and of course, around the, um, the river at this time of year, uh, is absolutely phenomenal place for, for bird life and for other, other uh, animals as well. Many of those birds are there because uh, there's such a phenomenal feeding of, um, opportunity in those, those mayflies. So you'll get lots of birds, a lot of swallows and swifts diving down to take, uh, take the mayfly, maybe the bee eaters as well. Um, but as well as those, there are a host of other superb species to, uh, to see in and around Hungary at that time, turtle doves there. Uh, and, and uh, the bottom photograph of a red-footed falcon there with a, with a 
with a roller. Uh, absolutely beautiful, beautiful birds to, to be able to see. And they are quite commonly seen across the whole of, of, of Hungary and well, in that central sort of region, um, which as I say, sparsely populated um, and, uh, and, and much of it is a reserve, much of it is protected uh, land. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great place for wildlife. Like I say, not, not just birds, but um, con terrapins are uh, often seen in the river. There's, there's uh, European tree frog there in the right hand side, stag beetles, and all, all manner of, of, of taxa to, to see uh, and enjoy on, on this trip. It really is a trip for the all round naturalist. It's not just a trip for, for, for the mayflies, for the, for the insect enthusiasts, uh, but, but for, for everyone. And in fact, it then goes on from there after having spent four nights uh, near the Tisha River uh, to go further north into the Book Hills. Uh, and this is a, a beautiful region uh, of uh, predominantly beech forest uh, on the hills in the, in the north of Hungary. Uh, we stay for three nights there. And during that period, we have the opportunity to go out with uh, some of the um, people who are monitoring uh, the small mammals and the bats, uh, which are of course mammals, uh, in, in the forest there and, and roundabout. So you may have the opportunity to see uh, the, the dormouse there, hazel dormouse, the uh, babistrel uh, uh, bats there on the left-hand side. We're unable, of course, as uh, participants to, to handle the bats. That requires a, a license, but the, the monitor, monitoring people out there are, are uh, on hand to uh, uh, show us the bats so you can sort of see them up close, just as you see them in that photograph there. And it's, it's a lovely, a lovely area uh, to, to explore. And there's lots of butterflies as well in that, uh, in, the, in the glades in amongst the woods there. This is a, a clouded Apollo um, and, and the chestnut, uh, chestnut heath. So there are a lot of variety of butterflies, of course, many more butterflies in, in sort of central Europe, different species than we have here in the UK, but a lot of the similar families, um, but, but fantastic sort of uh, uh, butterflies to see and other insects and flora. Uh, it, it's an all-round tour for, for, for the all-round naturalist, uh, really. Um, and I'll come touch on an, another trip that we do in Hungary. Um, this is one that we do in coordination uh, with, um, uh, with, with one of our guides who is uh, an expert on, on woodpeckers, Jared Gorman, uh, written many books on woodpeckers, but also a phenomenal all-round uh, birder. Uh, so uh, so we, we head out to Hungary in, in the autumn uh, and this is principally timed around the, uh, the arrival of, of the cranes. Uh, there are a lot of other wildfowl as well. Uh, and geese turn up in, in the autumn time, but uh, uh, cranes in particular uh, arrive from their breeding grounds up in the north of, uh, north of Europe, up in Russia and Scandinavia. Uh, and they use as a staging post the, uh, the, the, the um, Autobarge National Park uh, and the, all the wetlands uh, that are within that large protected area in central Hungary. So uh, in there, upwards of you know, sort of um, 50, maybe even 100,000 cranes arrived during the autumn period. Uh, just as a stopover, they, they're then moving on south to, uh, to their wintering grounds in southern Europe and across the Mediterranean, as the map shows. But they spend a, a good few weeks in and around uh, the Autobarge National Park uh, and to hear them coming in, to flying in, uh, across the marshes each evening or into the marshes I should say is, is a real phenomenal e experience. Uh, whilst uh, in that area the Autobarge there are there are areas there are villages that have uh, uh, quite large roosts of long-eared owls uh, so we, we take you to show to show you the, the long-eared owl roosts uh, there's one uh, in a village where I've seen up, up, upwards of 20 uh, birds in, in one tree a lovely sight uh, and of course, out on the plains, you, you have great bustards and, and a lot of other raptors. Uh, and as I say, all the sort of water birds associated with the, with the wet meadows there uh, as well. And, and this, tri this trip as well also uh, uh, heads up to the Book Hills uh, afterwards. So this um, uh, area, this is one of the hotels on the left uh, that we use. We use a, a few different hotels in the, in the village of Nozvai. Uh, which is on the south uh, sort of side of the of the book hills, surrounded by a beautiful beech forest. Uh, and in the autumn time, they're all changing colours. Uh, and also within that area, there's a lot of grapevines, so you, you're able to uh, enjoy the local wines as well uh, and, and go for a wine tasting if you like, whilst whilst you're in in that region. 
and and within the woods, uh, as I say, Gerard is our uh, one of our guides in this uh, this area. He's an expert on woodpeckers, written many books on it, um, and uh, and he will take you to try and find as many of the species as, as possible there. And there are eight resident species within uh, uh, within Hungary. Uh, the, the, the white backs, the, the picture on the left there, the grey headed and the middle uh, spotted woodpeckers are, are some of those that people are sort of keen to see, particularly the white back is quite a challenge to see, but uh, uh, we usually see it on, on, on the tours. Uh, so there's eight different species, Include if you include Rhineck, then that's, that's actually nine species, but right, the Rhineck is only a, uh, is only, only a migrant bird, it's not a resident. And of course, uh, as I said, uh, many of you may have been to uh, Budapest prior to, uh, you know, uh, over the years, it's a very popular place, uh, but it's equally, a, it's quite an easy place to spend a few extra days, either at the beginning or at the end of a tour. Uh, it, it's uh, all of our tours start and finish there, and the airport connection into the city is very, very good, and there are lots and lots of hotels there. So if you did want to extend your stay and have a little bit of a city break um, afterwards, then uh, it's, it's an ideal place to do that. So I'll move on now to Georgia. Um, excuse me a moment while I just have a sip of water. So Georgia is, um, uh, for many might say, actually not in Europe. We're talking about Eastern Europe here. Uh, and, and, uh, and Georgia is really on the boundary. It's right far over in the, uh, in the Caucasus. Uh, in fact, it's on the south side of the Caucasus. So by some, uh, some definitions, it's actually in Asia. But it's very much a European country in terms of its culture. It's, it's a, a, a Christian country um, and, and its history is much more closely allied, I would suggest, to, uh, to, to parts of Europe really than it is to that of the Middle East, which you, which you could be included as, as part of. Uh, so where is it? Uh, just in case you're not sure, um, uh, I put an arrow in there, which is actually quite handy because uh, uh, somebody's commented it's not all that easy to see the little arrows when we use the cursor. Um, but uh, basically it's on the south side of that mountain range which extends from the, uh, the Black Sea on the, on the west to the Caspian Sea on the right. Uh, so it has a range of uh, habitats from high mountains that are over 5,000 metres in height, uh, right down to the coast on the Black Sea uh, at, at sea level. Uh, here's a closer up image of the, that same region. And you can see there the outline of Georgia. Uh, not, a, not a huge country. Uh, 69,700 square kilometres, so what's that? That's sort of uh, um, um, probably about the size of Scotland, I guess, uh, and quite a small population, really, 3,000, sorry, 3.7 million, uh, and most of those live in Tbilisi uh, and Batumi and, and the major sort of centres. Um, largely speaking, once you get beyond those cities, then it, it's, it's really quite um, a sort of uh, uh, agricultural and, and, and pastoral sort of uh, uh, setting. Or I should just say they have their own language and not only their own language, but their own script. So the, uh, the word at the top there is actually Georgia uh, in the Georgian script. So you'll see that else everywhere about, about the country because that's their script. But obviously they, they also use, in fact, they also use Cyrillic as well as the, uh, uh, the, the, the same alphabet that we use. So uh, it takes a bit of getting used to all these different signs. So why go to Georgia? Well, if you're a birder, you will almost certainly have a copy of the book on the left. Uh, and, uh, and you may, as you've thumbed through it over the years, uh, seen a number of different species that you, that you are not ever likely to see in the UK or even in much of Western Europe, because they are birds that are very much on the, the extreme sort of end, edge of the, uh, the Western Palearctic. Uh, and they're birds that, find them, that we find mainly in, in and around the Caucasus Mountains. So there are certain species that if you want to see, really you need to head to either the Caucasus or, or maybe further, in some instances, some, some further, further east in the Himalayas, um, but there are quite a few that are endemic to the Caucasus. So this is why a lot of birders are keen to go to, to Georgia to see uh, a sort of a handful of species that are particularly uh, sought after by, by birders. But in fact, there's another good reason to go to Georgia and really at a different time of year. And, and, and the reason why we have two separate uh, tours uh, one in the springtime, one in the autumn. The spring trip is the one that's on the right hand side in terms of the map there. Uh, and the one on the left is our, is our autumn tour. Uh, and that's the uh, Raptor Spectacular. Uh, and this is a tour which uh, is um, really uh, timed around the huge number of migrating raptors that, that come down, funnel down 
uh, through from, from Russia, from their breeding grounds up in uh, the, the north in, in Russia, uh, and make their way down uh, through between the, the mountains on the, the east, the Caucasus Mountains and the sea. Uh, and because there's quite a narrow stretch of land between the, uh, those, those, the, the mountains and the sea, they, they really are concentrated uh, in a small area. And if you stand on the top of some of the hills uh, in, in Western Georgia, in a, near the city of Batumi, uh, in, the, in the autumn time, you could see tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of raptors passing overhead. This is the sort of site you could be uh, viewing if you go there. Uh, literally a half a million honey buzzards pass through uh, this, this area, this small area, uh, in, the, in the course of, of one season, um, literally just a few weeks. And the, uh, the movement of these um, raptors, because they're all migrating north to south at this time, but because raptors don't really tend to uh, move in straight lines, uh, because they have to catch the thermals, they, they ride the thermals and the updrafts which means that they can gain lift by spiraling up on columns of air. And, and basically, they once they reach a good height, they're able then to glide along to the next thermal and catch that thermal and spiral up again. And these thermals sometimes contain uh, 100 birds or more, in fact, as you see in this photograph here. Uh, and they're, they're called kettles. They're, they're called kettles of, of, of raptors when you get these sort of huge concentrations of them. And basically, they're making their way from one thermal to the next, make slowly progressing down the coast, uh, down towards Turkey, where they will then start to fly in a more sort of linear fashion uh, uh, south towards the Arabian Peninsula and, and, and Africa in some instances. But vast numbers uh, in terms of species, many different species of eagles and hawks uh, and, and a lot of honey buzzards. Like I say, there's a number count of honey buzzards. Uh, in some years has been in excess of, of half a million, in fact, so high that, that it increased the number of the overall world population that was thought to, that the world thought to have uh, when, this, when these counts started. Uh, it literally put, took the number up quite considerably. We didn't realize there were so many in the, in the, the uh, breeding up in, in Russia and side parts of Siberia. So honey buzzards, buzzards, another very, very common species, the, the steppe buzzard there, subspecies of our common buzzard, uh, and, 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 and other um, birds as well, the Vance Sparrow Hawk uh, is, is another common bird seen. Booted Eagles, Pallid Harriers, uh, really huge numbers of, of, of all of these birds and often very close, often very distant, of course, as well when they're approaching or, or high up in these uh, kettles. Um, but as they, some of them descend, you do get very, very good views of, of the birds. So that, that is one trip. And before actually I move on from talking about the raptors, that particular tour, although focusing on the raptors uh, for sure, uh, also visits a, a number of wetland reserves and forest reserves to see a number of other lowland uh, species. So we go to, there's a, a, an area of pine forest in the Batumi Botanical Gardens where you can see Krupa's nuthatch. Uh, there's areas of wetland along the coast uh, where you've got broadbill sandpipers, um, of course, a lot of the same species that you see over the other side of the Black Sea in the Danube Delta are, are present on the, on the eastern coast of the Black Sea uh, around Batumi. So, so it's, it's not solely a, a tour aimed at, at, at seeing the raptors, but that spectacle is what uh, forms the, uh, the real uh, um, the sort of high point of that trip. But there are a number of other species to see. I'd like to go on to talk, however, now about a trip which I made myself uh, in the, uh, the spring of last year. I say actually that's 2019 we now we've moved on another another notch uh, and this is the Georgia in spring trip which starts and finishes in Tbilisi we fly into Tbilisi um, and uh, initially uh, spend a few, few hours just uh, catching our breath and cleaning ourselves up and, and getting ourselves ready uh, after having had a, normally an overnight flight uh, through from the UK via, uh, via um, uh, Istanbul. We then head up to the north to Kazbegi, um, and uh, that takes us up the uh, uh, highway from Tbilisi. This is Tbilisi, wonderful old city, uh, but also very modern as well. But we head out of the city up in up over a high pass that's uh, over 2000 meters in height, uh, passing uh, a, a friendship monument on the top with lots of snow about, uh, lots and lots of birds uh, around alpine chuff, water pipit everywhere, ring oozles flying through, 
um, often uh, golden eagles and llama guys flying around as well. Uh, this is a you know a really beautiful introduction to the birds that we hope to see during much of the rest of the trip. Um, and then we go on to uh, uh, Kazbegi itself, or the town is actually called Stepitz Minda, and it's overlooked by Kazbegi, this mountain on the, uh, uh, that, that is over 5,000 meters in height, uh, and that overlooks this town, very beautiful location, uh, and uh, surrounding the town, yes, is, are, are mountains, and from a viewpoint surrounding the town, we're looking up to the just below the snow line, for certain key species that we that we hope to see, and the the, uh, the the Caucasian snowcock and the Caucasian black grouse are are two species that we tend to see in this kind of environment. You hear the Caucasian snowcock with its desolate whistling call, uh, sounding much like a, our curlew high up in the peaks. Uh, that's the the bird up on the, the right there, the, the Caucasian snowcock. You're unlikely to get a view quite as good as that. That was an amazing photograph taken by one of our guides, um, but you certainly can see them through scopes. You get good views of them moving around with, and, and possibly with chicks. They breed up on those high mountain uh, rocky areas. Uh, and then we have the down on the bottom there, the black uh, uh, Caucasian black grouse, uh, similar to our own black grouse, different sort of tail, uh, and, uh, but, but a lecking in much the same way that our own black grouse does. Other species that we hope to see up there or around the, the, the near the town in, in the bushes, there is the Golden Stats Red Start and the, the Great Rose Finch, super birds, really beautiful. Golden Stats Red Start, only really uh, visible in, in, uh, uh, in the Caucasus and also uh, as this map shows a little bit further east as well if, if you go to the Himalayas. And, and the Rose Finch, again, similar distribution. Caucasus is the furthest west that you're going to find it. Uh, wall creepers, beautiful birds, uh, and, uh, and seen around the dam just sort of north of Stephensminder uh, quite commonly, and, and, and red-fronted serins are another species that we, we target whilst there. And it's not just about birds, of course, there are a few mammals. Uh, to see this is a Persian or, or, or Caucasus, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Caucasus squirrel, uh, and that's a, a, a nice little, little um, uh, squirrel to see. Uh, its, des its distribution is mostly through sort of Turkey and I think uh, the, the Greek islands are about the furthest west that it comes. Um, but up in the mountains there is an endemic mammal uh, which is the eastern uh, eastern Caucasian tur uh, and that's a, a member of the goat family, a capra uh, uh, genus and uh, you see herds of those as we're looking for the, for the grouse uh, the snowcocks, we're, we're often seeing great herds of, of these, uh, the, these goat species uh, up, in the, up in the high peaks there. So from up in the north, we then head back to Tbilisi uh, and then take the road east from there out towards the steppes and we stay in the town of Sinyagi. Uh, this is very much part of the wine producing area of Georgia. Georgia is the home or, or the cradle of, uh, of wine production. Wine's been produced there for uh, six to eight thousand years but uh, that's our base and from there we head out into the steppe uh, and from our vehicles uh, we, we see uh, tremendous numbers of birds. Uh, this really is an area that hasn't had any intensive agriculture whatsoever and, and we have corn buntings singing from every every small bush. You've got calandra larks and crested larks everywhere. It, it's a fantastic place to go. Uh, Black-faced buntings there uh, black and, and, and Eurasian bee eaters. Uh, we, we had uh, pallid harriers doing a, a, a wonderful uh, food pass not far from the vehicle and the female here sat nicely for us to photograph. Unfortunately, the male uh, was, was a little bit distant so we didn't get a good photograph of him but, but the female really gave us a good opportunity to see her very, very well. Um, this area is close to the uh, border with Azerbaijan and we took a walk from this monastery uh, the David Garadja Monastery up to a high sort of uh, ridge that overlooks Azerbaijan and from there we had blue rock thrush, we had western rock nut hatch uh, uh, all around us uh, and then we went on from there to uh, another small area of the, the steppe before heading back to Tbilisi uh, where Minotaur's warbler is, is a sort of reasonably common sight, we had good views of that uh, and Black Franklin is also present in, in that area. And these are other very much sought after species. So from there, we then head back 
uh, towards Tbilisi uh, and our final night. Hopefully, we, you know, we've had a great week of, uh, of birding, uh, seen some amazing sights, some beautiful scenery as well, and some, enjoyed a great deal of uh, wonderful Georgian hospitality, great food. Uh, and this hotel is their last night's meal. Uh, looking out, uh, the view from the, 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 the restaurant there is, is the view on the right, looking out over the river uh, and the sights of Tbilisi. So that was a, a splendid end to a splendid tour. So thank you very much for listening to me talking about Hungary and Georgia. Thank you. And I'll hand you back to Sarah. Great. Thank you very much, David. Fantastic talk there. I love the images of the of the raptors, the raptor spectacular there. Um, and anyone who's seen uh, some of the Planet Earth episodes will um, be familiar with those scenes. Sounds like a fantastic tour. Um, we've now got some time for some questions. Um, so if you do have any questions, please do just type them in the Q&A box. We've had a couple come in already. Um, quite a few questions actually about food and whether vegetarians can be catered for. Um, if I could just ask all panelists actually to, to answer that for um, their respective uh, destinations that they've just talked about. So we could start with you, David, because yes. the um, question I've got here most recently is about yeah. vegetarians and can they be catered for yes. in Georgia? Yeah, it's, it's challenging to be perfectly honest. The Georgian diet is, is, a, is a very carnivorous one, um, but it is possible. And we had uh, vegetarians on our tour last year uh, and yes, the, certainly food was provided. Um, we made sure that the, uh, the, the local hotels and agents were aware of people's dietary requirements before we left. So yes, the, the, certainly vegetarian food was, was, was and, and good vegetarian food, a good uh, range of food was, was available to them. Um, but, but to be fair, normally, I think the average Georgian does not eat an awful, you don't meet many vegetarians in Georgia. Uh, and, and probably the same is true in Hungary to a lesser extent. I mean, there's much more Western influence uh, now in Hungary, and, and I think it's far more e it's far easier to get vegetarian food within Hungary. Um, but Georgia, both both countries, certainly, it, 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 it's, it's very definitely possible. Yeah, in in Romania and Poland, I would say it's you know, similar to Hungary. To ten, ten years ago, it's very difficult, um, but these days they're much more used to catering for um, for vegetarian. So we can quite easily now cater for vegetarians both in on all of our Poland tours and all, all of our Romania tours. Um, I would just say that sometimes you might find the food a little bit repetitive. They have their sort of their standard um, vegetarian meals, which they will often provide on quite a few um, different occasions. Um, but yeah, we had a lot of vegetarians on our trips um, and we can cater for them in the, the vast majority of countries, uh, both in, in Europe and, uh, and around the world. And can I ask you both the same question again, but for a vegan diet? We've had a couple of people asking that question this evening. Um, I would say that probably is more, more challenging. Um, I would need really to contact our, our, our local guys out in Romania and Poland, just check with them. It depends whether, if it's a, if it's a matter of actually having things cooked separately as well as it being vegan, then that may be more uh, problematic. I wouldn't say no. Um, um, but I, that's something I would I, I would need to check. Yeah, and and similarly, I would say exactly the same as Paul. It's something we'd need to check, but uh, I think it, it could be done, provided it, it's not um, as as Paul says necessarily cooking in different implements and in, in different vessels and things like that. That may be more of a challenge. But a lot of the places where we stay in Georgia are, are small, and we may be the only clients there. So uh, so you know, it, it's definitely uh, we, it can be arranged. Great, okay. Um, and we have a question from Jenny Edwards asking what the accommodation is like on the 10-day Romania tour. Paul? Okay, well, I did reply to that one actually, um, but um, yeah, it's the accommodation is absolutely, um, it, it, it's fine. In, I, I, I tend to say to people I wouldn't go to Romania for the accommodation. Um, I would go there for the, for the wildlife and the landscapes and the birds and the, the wonderful people. Um, but the, the accommodation is very comfortable in, um, in Zarnesh, um, in the Carpathians and in Tulsa, which is the, the rooms are en suite, um, twin bedded um, and, and clean, clean and comfortable is all I can really say. And in the Delta, well, I showed you a photo there uh, during my talk of, the, of a uh, typical room um, in, on the Flotel. 
Um, again, clean and comfortable, but nothing, nothing spectacular. Okay, thank you, Paul. And just going back to the couple of questions about uh, how easy it is to be a, a vegan on these trips, we have started looking into um, expanding our tours, which visit uh, purely visit lodges that cater well um, for vegan diets, not just um, you know sort of a basic sort of plant-based meal, but actually very good quality food. Um, and it's something that uh, we are developing at the moment um, and looking into and hope to launch um, as soon as we can. But uh, you'll have to keep your eyes peeled and uh, watch our e-newsletters for further information on those. Um, we've had a few questions on uh, biting insects as well. Are the midges and mosquitoes particularly bad in the Danube Delta? Um, I've never particularly found them bad my, myself. Um, there are mosquitoes around, um, of course, in somewhere like the Delta, one of the biggest wetlands anywhere in Europe. You're going to get plenty of plenty of insects um, in the in, in the morning and the and the early evening. You you do get mosquitoes around, um, but the windows on the, of the flotel have got netting, and if you pop, pop on some insect repellent, then you know, it should be absolutely fine. I, so I'm, I'm not one, a person who tends to get bitten badly, so I may not be a, a, a typical um, um, example, but no, I've never had any problem, real problems with, with mosquitoes in the Delta at any time of year. I would, you know, if you really want to avoid mosquitoes, then the earlier and later dates are probably the ones, the ones to go for. Um, um, but yeah, you know, again, I wouldn't let it stop you from exploring um, the, the fabulous area. Okay, great. Thank you, Paul. Um, David, a question for you. Judith too says, is altitude a problem in Georgia? Um, no, it isn't. No, uh, I think the highest uh, that, um, that we go to on the tour at Stepinsminder is, is just over 2000 meters. The pass that we, uh, that we, we crossed is 2300 meters. And when we stay down in, in the town there, we're, we're, we're around 1000 meters and we go during the day to, to maybe up as high as two, two and a half. But that, that's not really the sort of altitude which would cause you great difficulty. You might find yourself a little bit more short of breath if you were walking at pace, but uh, it's certainly not the sort that would induce any kind of altitude sickness or anything of that nature. And a question from Sheila Thomas, is Wi-Fi widely available in the hotels used for these trips? In Georgia? In your, uh, um, I think the question is for, for all trips, really, but if you could answer David and then Paul okay. would answer. Um, we appear to have lost Tom, unfortunately. Right. But, um... <laughs> so, so, so certainly in Hungary, yes, that, that there would be Wi-Fi. We should be freely available in, in most of the hotels that we use there, definitely. Uh, Georgia, I would say yes, in the, uh, the, the hotels that we use in Tbilisi. <coughs> Um, but probably, I don't think so in the hotel in Siniaki, uh, although that, that may change, um, you know, o over the coming years, I'm sure that they will introduce that, uh, that, that, that area is probably a little bit more off the grid typically, but it's certainly anywhere in the capital. Uh, and, and in fact, I'm, I'm fairly sure there was, there was Wi-Fi in the hotel up in, uh, up in Kazbegi. Okay. Um, and Another question from Barbara, is there any problem in any of the areas covered this evening with tick-borne encephalitis and Lyme's disease? And should one get vaccinated or carry antibiotics? Um, I, I'd, I'd need to check on that. I th think it is present in Romania and, and, and Poland. Um, I've never, I've traveled around Eastern Europe um, a lot over the years, ne never really thought about getting vaccinated for i think you just have to be careful with with ticks um and you know over in this country it's actually quite easy to get lyme's disease if you're going down somewhere like the new forest um so i would just be um cautious and just you know check check your legs and things in the in the evening when you're back um in the um back at the hotel um but uh, i've so I'd, that's something I would I would I would need to double check whether whether it's actually pre present in those in Romania and Poland for sure. Okay, but people can always give us a call um, and email the office anytime, and we can follow up with any of these questions and, and answers at any point. Um, this question has made me smile. This is another one from Judith too. How easy is it to see the European hamster as shown in the recent David Attenborough <laughs> series? <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I'm, that I'm not, I, I can't <laughs> answer that. I've never seen a European hamster. So for me, it's very difficult. Um, well, I'm not sure we have any, the, 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 what about the hungry mammals tour? Does that um, European hamster? I, I don't think so. No, I, I don't think that's, I mean, obviously the ones that were in the, uh, the program, I think were in the, in, in Vienna, aren't they? Uh, they're in the, the uh, cemetery there. Um, no, I don't believe they're present in, in, the, uh, in the areas on the Hungry Mammals Tour. Uh, certainly yeah. plenty of other, um, the dormice, the three species of dormice that they see there, but yeah, hamster, no. Uh, funny enough, I, I have a feeling Tom might know more about this than, than, than probably Paul or I, and it's a shame he's not not on there because I think he may have either been or know somebody who's been seen them in, in Vienna. <laughs> I have just had a message from Tom apologizing he's having some computer difficulties ah, he's right. trying trying to, <laughs> to hop back on he hasn't just abandoned ship yeah um but uh, yeah well European hamsters that's uh, Judith you may have just created a new tour for us just <laughs> hamsters. um we can uh, investigate that um a question from uh, Roy Ticehurst how difficult are the walks in terms of length and hills? Uh, he's not specified which tour this is in reference to, but um, all of our tours have their own grading. So you'd be able mm. to find uh, information on that on each individual itinerary and on the, the tour page. Um, David or Paul, I don't know if you want to add anything uh, to uh, that. The, the, Certainly the, Poland and Romania are, are both pretty straightforward, really, um, Poland. The Elevatia and Biebja is essentially a very flat area, um, so you're on good good paths for the majority of the um, of the trip. Um, of course, on the Carpathians, you're in the mountains, so things are a little bit more up and down. But on all of our trips, we're never going at a fast pace anyway. We're, all, we're always going at a pretty slow pace, stopping to look at the at the birds and the um, and the flowers and the butterflies, etc. So we're never going to be route marching you. Um, but as Sarah says, um, there's, there's always more information on the grading, both in the brochure and in particular in the trip itineraries. At the back of the itinerary, we normally have a paragraph um, on, on grading and uh, how, how difficult it would be. But the vast majority of European tours in particular are, are, are pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Great. Thank you, Paul. Um, and a question here from Peter Twitchett asking about a brief mention of the weather usually experienced on these tours. That's uh, quite a difficult one to answer specifically. I think you can get all, all weathers in one day if you're in a mountainous environment. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, sun and, and rain and sleet, depending upon yeah. where you are. Mm. Yeah, in, in Poland in the spring, for example, you're talking about very similar spring weather to, to what we have here, um, changeable. Um, you, can have some, you can have a lovely week of brilliant sunshine. Um, equally, you could have a, a, a wet and uh, and gray few days as well so but you know, typically as the as the spring progresses into summer and as per here the weather becomes more stable in romania um at the end of may into june august it can be very very hot down in down in the lowlands down in the, the dubrovnia and um, babadag area which is why it's so great for butterflies um i assume that's the same down in the area tom's tom's talking about down in macedonia um but um yeah you know typically you're going to get a mix of nice sunny days and and some and some more overclass possibly wet days and as sarah said up in the mountains it can be raining in the morning sunny by midday and then raining in by one so it's changeable right and i think that may be the last of our questions um, if we do find we haven't answered any, we um, will email you with a with an answer. Um, so, sorry, um, sorry to interrupt. There was a comment yeah. I noticed from a, from a gentleman, I'm not sure his name, about whether our tours just cater for keen birders or oh, right. whether um, we also welcome um, less experienced um, people along. And uh, yeah, we have all all range of, of different people on our tours from, from very, very keen bird watchers um, to, to beginners, you know, we are, you'll find the group where we typically mix, it'll have a, a few very key knowledgeable people. It'll have um, of some who are very interested in birds, um, but are not necessarily um, that expert in, in, in ID. Um, you think 
Right, we say, you know, you've got a tour leader along. That's why we bring a tour leader along on all these trips because he or she will be there to point out the birds, to identify things for you. So you don't need to be an expert. You just need to have a have an interest and a, and a passion for natural history. And uh, if you've got that, you will enjoy the trip no matter how expert you are. Yeah, absolutely, I'd agree. As long as you've got the interest and the desire to have a, a holiday in pursuit of wildlife, you're going to enjoy yourself. doesn't matter experience level prior to that. Great, and I think that brings our evening to a close, unless David, Paul, do you have anything further that you'd like to add? Um, no, I, I don't think so. Uh, just to Lovely. say, if anybody has any, any additional questions they suddenly think of, you know, we're always around, give, send us an email or, or, or give the Nature Trek office a call. Yep, that's great. And thank you all so very much for, for sending in your comments this evening. Um, they're, they're flooding in right now, people saying thank you so much, very interesting, brilliant evening. I've even had a couple of people message me and say how much they're enjoying looking at my fish tank. So thank you very much. <laughs> um, I, I got this during lockdown as I was missing guiding on my tropical coral reefs. So uh, this is very soothing for me to look at during the day. Um, but I'm glad that it's provided a good backdrop for this evening as well. <laughs> um, this is the third of 13 evenings um, that we have. So if you're interested in signing up for more, then please do sign up for the rest and just contact us if you um, need the link to where we've got uh, more. They are available on the website. Um, we'd appreciate any feedback that you may have. Um, we're just sort of getting used to doing these. So if you want to let us know what you thought of tonight, then please do email us at info at naturetrek.co.uk and let us know your thoughts. We'll be back the same time on Tuesday evening at 7.30, where we'll be taking you this time to Asia to India, Borneo, Sri Lanka, and Nepal. And we hope you can join us. We'll stay online for the next couple of minutes, just in case there are any other last minute questions. Um, but until the next time, take care and good night, everyone. Thank you for joining. Yeah, thank you.